From NPR Music, you're connected to All Songs Considered. I'm Bob Boylan. From time to time on this show, we'd like to have musicians play DJ for us. It's always interesting to hear what they gravitate towards and find in the music they love the common thread that makes its way into the music they create. Other shows you can hear in our DJ series include M. Ward, Bright Eyes, Tom Verlaine, members of Tilly and the Wall, and Joanna Newsom. Today, we have one of our favorite musicians, Tom York, the singer and songwriter and guitar player and electronic musician with Radiohead. We'll talk about the music on Radiohead's recent CD, In Rainbows, and his 2006 solo CD, The Eraser. Tom York gave us a list of some of his favorite musicians, and that's where we begin. Where do you, uh, Tom York, find your music? Where in the house? Or well, yeah, well, where in the house? You keep it in the bedroom, <laughs> it's but, but also... <laughs> <laughs> it's locked in a safe, actually, because I'm paranoid about it. <laughs> and, and where do you hear new stuff from? Where, where does it come from? Um, mostly these days... It's either swapped round from members of the band, because we all have our little... Uh, niches is not quite the right word, but we all have our particular tastes. They're always very different. All, I spend a lot of time now um, downloading stuff because there's not a lot of shops really in my area that um, are selling the stuff I want to hear. Uh, so I use a website called Boomcat a lot, and you know various others, Bleep... I even sometimes have to go to iTunes. Do you miss that? I mean, did you do that as a kid, go to, to go to record shops and, and maybe have a friend or a person behind the counter that would help you out find stuff? Yeah, I miss it a lot. I think, um, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm fairly ignorant of how it is in the U.S., but it strikes me that my experiences in the U.S. are much more positive in terms of uh, independent shops than, than, than over here. I think it's a luck of the draw. I mean, I think it's, and it's true of radio too, which is in yeah. certain cities, great radio. Other yeah. cities, other places, forget it. And, and there's just not, not, not a way in the world you're going to find, find good tunes. Yeah, it's, it's hit and miss here. The, the, the shops that I've, I've loved going to um, go under fairly quickly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, um, it, it's, it's also a taste. I mean, there's a lot of... Um, there's a big shop that sells lots of house music, but I, I just can't go in there. It drives me crazy, you know. Mm-hmm. They have a tiny little electro- electronica section in the corner, but I, <laughs> I just can't do it anymore. I, I used to do it. I used to face them down and go in, but it's just not worth it now. Pick me something that, that let's say, in the last uh, handful of years that has really knocked you out. Okay, well, hmm, where would I start? I'd start probably with um, with The Liars, actually. Okay. Drums Not Dead, the album Drums Not Dead. I've been listening to them since their first record, and I'm struggling to remember what the first record was called now, but um, I think they were based in New York originally, but when they made this record, which was, what, two years ago now, they moved to Berlin, um, and it's, like, all over the record in the most extraordinary way. Uh, They're essentially... Well, they started out as a... uh, I hate the term art rock, but that's kind of... If you want to do it briefly, that was what it was. Um, And then... By the time they made Drums Not Dead, um, they seemed to basically be... They're obviously going out clubbing all the time, <laughs> but they were, st- they were still using their instruments to... Just creating this nightmare industrial music, but using, you know, quite soft and sensitive sounds and lots of drums, surprisingly enough. It's as much about the way that the record's put together for me. It's, I don't know how on earth they arrived at the thing they did, basically, after after listening to it endlessly in my car, I still can't work it out. <laughs> Which is, you know, sometimes for me, I enjoy records just for that, you know, whereas the rest of my family will be looking at me very puzzled while I play it. <laughs> I want to uh, play a little for people who've never heard Liars. Uh, the record's Drums Not Dead. Do you have a favourite cut that I should play? <sighs> um, if I had a pair of headphones, I could... Because like, it's that classic thing where I can't remember let's, which one. Let's skip through it real quick for you. Like oh, yeah, okay, you. Okay, so And then you tell me, oh, that's the one, and then we'll... Well, can, you mean you can actually play it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. That's a pretty good one. No, next one? That's the first one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that would scare them. Yeah. That, that's, no, that's, not, that's just designed just to frighten people, I think, one. Yeah, that one's designed to frighten people as well. Um, this one's very beautiful. Um, that's probably an easy way in. Drums, drum get a, gets a glimpse, that is, isn't it? Was that...? We're fast-forwarding a little, just... Oh, OK. So we... Now, uh, this is... Was that track five? Yeah, that was five. You want to do that? 
Uh, no, let's, okay. this is track six now, isn't it? Yes. Let's have a listen to this one a second. Yeah, okay. That one. The wrong coat for Miss for you, Mount Heart Attack. He's very lovely. Do you think they created that music at that tempo, or do you think it, it's all slowed down later? No, no, I think um, they... Um, I would put my money on them having worked in layers. It's that really odd thing where you start the grey area between sequencing and performing a track where you're cutting and pasting things uh, but because if you use uh, live sounds mm -hmm. you can duplicate and copy and loop without really knowing where it stops and starts where it's repeating where it isn't and that's one of the crazy things about it you know um, the record I think no I think um, it sounds like it's slowed down, but that's just probably because they were working in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Yes, indeed. So talk about that gray area, because you've, you've lived in that gray area, be, I, mm. I assume, in, in writing music, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's, um, Explain it's, to people what happens. Well, I mean, nowadays, you know, everybody has access to things like GarageBand and stuff. When you discover for the first time that you can create new music out of sections of what you've done you know if you if you improvise say for five minutes mm -hmm, over right. something and then you take a, a pattern of it you know and it falls in a strange place and blah 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 you start to think in different ways and the the downside of it is you can get incredibly lazy you can be no i mean <laughs> no, most, that's, that's right. it's an absolute that's curse really, you know right. it's a constant sort of um dilemma for for, for the band really um because uh it sucks it sucks certain things away that you can well well you can we can tidy this up we can cut this here we can put this here but if you if you're not approaching it in a lazy fashion if you're approaching it as um a sort of strict concept as as part of you know that the part of the writing process as the liars are obviously doing on this record you can end up with something really crazy really original because you you're open to it you know what yeah. what what excites me about it is the fact that you're never really sure what is what you know i've been an electronic musician for a, a long time yeah. and the beauty i find in in the the selection there and and stuff that you do is that my at least i imagine that the person who started making this music had no idea where they were going to wind up absolutely and so when you as a listener take it in you're on the journey as they were on the journey, and and that's to me the exciting part. Yeah. Well, this is this is what um, Nigel, who we work with, um, Nigel the producer. Coffee. Yeah. His thing is always is is is, is speed. Uh, what do you mean? It, if you drag to a halt, if you're sitting there, as as happens occasionally, or more than occasionally, you spend hours uh, cutting and chopping and blah blah blah. It's very dull, you know. Whereas it is, and, and things grow into a hole and the energy of the PC you're working on is dead, you know. And he's really good at, at, at basically stopping that from happening uh -huh. um, and keeping things moving because essentially, like any creative process, you can get sucked into it um, and you're, you're ceasing to be, as you said, open to what's happening, cease to be prepared to be surprised or whatever you know right so there's lots of rat holes to go down and you don't know uh, and i'm i'm of, of all of us i'm the absolute yeah. worst at that. <laughs> pick me another uh cut from your list uh well uh, predictably enough if you know anything about me i would choose mode selector uh because i'm still un unhealthily obsessed by the two german guys crazy <laughs> guys from berlin who um yeah, uh, I'd um, I would choose I would choose um, the, the the album Hello Mum uh, and a track called Kill Bill Volume Four because it's the most full on club track, complete with guys talking in the toilets beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is just it is you know. Okay, so let's let's listen to this. It's Mode Selector. It's a band. They're from Germany, and we'll come back and talk to Tom York. Thanks. Do you get to go out to clubs? To um, no. Yeah. <laughs> is it I'm, over? I'm, you you must have a, it's it. It's all point. over, man. It's yeah. all over. But That's um, a shame. in my head, yeah. I'm still going to clubs. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> can you can you put on a wig or something? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Hang yeah. on. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, that, I like that because it's so dumb. It's fantastically, fantastically dumb, but actually it's not. Um, and it sounds all wicked on my speakers at home, yeah, really yeah. loud. When when you say it's dumb, I, I just make sure we get the. It, it, it's dumb because they got people talking in the bathroom, and it's really funny and, and it's, this humor, and and yet the, it, the, you love the beat. Is that kind of what? No, we're I th- yeah, dumb as in that the the you know the music is just like this is pure, like uh, let's create something coming out of the speakers that make makes us want to do what we want to do. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> we're not thinking about it. It's just like that. That's what it is. You know, I mean, the, the nasty square wave and the, it's great. It sounds fantastic. Yeah, really rips up. Uh, have you ever ripped up uh, speakers trying to do that kind of music? <sighs> no. No, oh, you got it. <laughs> Actually, that, when I was at uh, uh, yeah, college, I used to do that, but um, that was a long time ago. He says, try not to sound depressed. Yeah. Do. Yeah. Oh, uh, well. Someone um, take me out. <laughs> <laughs> You spent some time uh, doing a record in in uh, 2006 uh, of your own. You used yeah. a lot of uh, electronics. What what sort of stuff do you work with? I'll get a little geeky. I mean, you talk mm. either about about the kind of gear you do, or 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 even just the sound you were after. You're obviously in love with a club and a dancey sound, and you have a penchant for some sort of pulse. Uh, yeah, so. I I'm trying to have it was a very um, a circuitous route that uh, that particular record because it was things that had been kicking around um virtually everything uh generated inside the a laptop as as I was travelling around and so on and then uh, there's almost no hardware at all apart from um, the a few bits of uh, bass and guitar and drums uh-huh. but um i think um it was as much to to me it's um as an old uh, apex twin always took um well, I was say always talks about. It. I've heard from a couple of people. His big thing is, you know, when you get a new piece of gear, that's your writing period. You know what I mean? When you when you're getting your head around it, Absolutely. that's when you create the stuff. It's it's actually the same as um, if you have a, get a new guitar or a new piano or mm-hmm. a new instrument. There's this amazing period where you're scrabbling around. You're not quite sure what's going on, and everything is basically. Um, you know, tripping you out. For me, that was the main inspiration on the, during the Eraser thing, was just finding my way around all this stuff that, um, you know, I was coming to pretty cold. I, I, I was having to learn pretty fast quite a lot of it because I didn't actually... I think I only really started throwing myself into learning about sequences in 2000. Before that, I'd never really gone anywhere near them. In terms of inspiration, I, I don't know. I, I was... It was doing it for me, in a way, you know. Mm-hmm. A, lo- a lot of... It, a lot of it was was fragments that, that were then assembled, and bits and pieces and random stuff that I would just knock off if I couldn't sleep in the middle of the night, and then somewhere within the midst of that there would be four bars that would be like, oh, hello, what's this? <laughs> you know. So it was very, very cut paste, random collage all over the shop, and that's the interesting thing about. I mean, I've, I've been working on stuff recently, um, and. It's not when like you say working sudden, on stuff, you mean working with sort of just a uh, uh, back, on, back on to that same, same sort of yeah, setup just, that you did for the solo record. Yeah, just um, scratching around, starting things up, you know, and um, it's a completely different mindset. I just thought I'd just throw myself straight back into it, but I think a lot of it is down to the excitement of having a new piece of gear. Mm-hmm. You know? It's kind of like, in a way, it's it's like if you get a new guitar, you're kind of collaborating with the luthier, the person who made your instrument. And, I, and for me, when I get a new gear that's electronic, I always feel like I'm kind of collaborating with the engineers, the designers who made these amazing things that you can, for example, move an object around and the pitch might change or whatever yeah. it is, you know. And it isn't so much a solo, lonely thing. I, I, mm. I, do, do you ever get that feeling? Yeah, well, I, I, the, the, I mean, the, the new sort of, if you're talking about collaboration, the new thing for us that is exciting us is we just got a load of those, uh, these things called lemurs, which are... Uh, like computer um, assignable controller things, you know, but it's all on a flat a flat screen, and you can do what you want with it. It's like a so it's and anything uh, can make anything else happen. Yeah, anything can make and it's a sound it's, it's wild, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah. for us, the, the, for, for the rest of the band um, and Nigel, the, the the downer has always been whenever we delve into the computer effects and stuff. It's a very one man process, and it's all click mouse la 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 and it's mm-hmm. very dull right. but suddenly you have the potential to create brand new instruments 
um, with different patches that you've built, um, suddenly there is this physical manifestation of a bunch of stuff that's actually been really difficult to um, interact with, you know. Well, let me play a little bit of this cut. This is um, this is your cut. It's skip divided, and uh, this is the. Uh, it's a mode selector uh, remix. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, mode selector remix. That's right. Yeah. And uh, let's give a listen to that. We'll come back and talk. Some- they did it. They did a great job. How'd they go about doing that? Did they approach you? Did, did, did um, no, they take I, the I, elements? Did- yeah, I, I sent the elements through. Um, that track gets progressively more strange. It yes. starts off fairly normal like that, and it just gets more alarming. Um, well, we'll put that all, all online for people to hear. We did a few remixes actually. We did one with Burial. I did well. I sent one to him. Uh, there was one from Fortet as well. Right. It was it was really kind of that. It was quite a fun thing to do, really. And this is a, a remix EP that people can get like through. There's a few. And yeah. Like there's that. in fact I think that it's all that was downloadable off uh, Boomcat. But I think they're making physical copies of it now. You've picked a. a bunch of th- a couple of things now been instrumental you have uh people who you like hearing their words as well as their music <laughs> <laughs> good point well there was there was some uh, there was some words on the lies one yeah but, yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> now if you want to talk about words i would say the most inspirational wordsmith for me at the moment bizarrely is uh mad villain yeah um the guy's a genius um these are, these are two folks right this is mf um, and yeah, it was M- MF Doom. Um, MF Doom is 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 the rhymes, and um, Madlib is mostly the the beats and stuff. Uh, okay. And it's a the, the album's called Mad Villainy. I'm a big uh, uh, fan of of Madlib anyway, but um, the combination of his like lo-fi beats and uh, uh, Mad Villain's random semi nonsense, but not like. Uh, this what I, l- I love about Madlim is is, is Vad- Madlim he's he's just on the edge of the freestyling thing all the time, and he is just coming from right at the back of your head. I've got a poet friend of mine called Jamie um, McKendrick in Oxford. Most of the time he doesn't really rate lyrics and stuff. Oh, you got to listen to this guy. I say it's sort of like um, it's like Bob Dylan, but without um, any folk, <laughs> no folk, <laughs> no none of that. It's like the last fifty years hasn't happened. <laughs> It's almost yeah. like Dada, and it's it, it's in some ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like anything can happen, and yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, I mean, well, it's, it, it's, it's it just takes a lot of courage to to like knock out these rhymes in the way he does. I think pick out something because there's a lot oh, of God, there's so man. many cuts on this record. Yeah, you just could, you can start with the accordion actually, track two. Okay, uh, let's try that. Let's try, listen to that for a minute. Hey Tom, can we pick yet another cut? Because there's, there's lots of yeah. so many different styles. That's a kind of a bit of a uh, yeah. yeah. I love that one. It's a bit of a downer. Yeah. Try meat grinder. <laughs> okay. Next one. What's the next cut? That's Frank Zappa. Huh? It's Frank Zappa playing in the background. Is that Zappa? Yeah, I mean, that, I don't know nothing about Zappa. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. How funny. Oh yeah, yeah. This one, this one's so cool. Which one's this? This is still forty-three, isn't it? Or have you moved on to bistro now? It's still three. Yeah. Okay. Off the beat grind. This is the one. Use this one. Well, let's shut up and move. See? Wow. How'd they get the Hawaiian <laughs> stuff in there? <laughs> yeah. They just do. Yeah, yeah, they do. And I don't know if you know who Jack Willane is by any chance, but uh, uh-uh. he was just. This is a guy who had an exercise show on television in, in the 50s and 60s here in America, and he was just, I mean, the guy always looked like he was about 27 years old, even when he was like 77. And he would, He's just a real character. And anyway, just the reference to what went on in that song yeah, come absolutely. from every single place, including I know. that. My favorite one is, <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. did you hear that in the middle? Yes, yes I did. Genius. <laughs> God. So... I don't know how someone like that comes up with writing words. You think it just? I think he smokes just... draw. <laughs> <laughs> how do you? How do you come up with writing words? Unfortunately, you, not the same know, way. Yeah. So I love hearing uh, what you have to say. It doesn't come through for me in the first ten times I hear your stuff. Sometimes it's a year later that I finally get all the words that you say. Do you, do you like that that happens when to people that they don't get it right away, or they make up things that they think might be what you? are saying i um care. i no i it surprises me um i think i think probably if you ask most 
musicians, uh, they're surprise stroke dumbfounded when it's not obvious first time round when you play it to someone. <laughs> I, I mean, I have that trouble with a band sometimes. Uh, like, you know, Everything That's Right Place was the absolute classic example of that. How so? Uh, well, it has, a, it has an extra beat in it, which I didn't even realise. And Johnny's like, it doesn't cycle normally. It doesn't cycle right. I'm like, what? Uh, I had the same thing with videotape, where I didn't realise that I'd moved the one two beats earlier than it should be. So so you're a, writing words and they're trying to make a, a sort like, of well, things yeah. line up into some 16 bar or whatever. And it's Well, they're just, they're, yeah, they're just trying to, you know, it's just a bit of a brain masher, so it takes a bit of time. Um, but, but you know, I, it's a genuine shock to me that, oh, it's not blindingly obvious because it's blindingly obvious uh, to the person who writes it, I think. Now, now you're talking about the content of the lyrics as opposed to the uh, rhythm of no, it? No, well, um, well, well. It's, it's all kind of the same thing yeah. um, to me. I mean, lyrics obviously is a different thing because the nature of if your words are any good, then that what, you, what you're trying to get across is, is, is um, always going to be... Meaning in the normal sense of the word is not exactly what you're trying to do. I mean, I think uh, off the top of my head, a song like Reckoner, for example, I'm singing those words because I have to sing those words. Uh, this, it was necessary for me to sing those words with that melody at that time, <laughs> <laughs> much like it's necessary, you know, to uh, have toast in the morning or whatever. It's uh, I, That's what has to happen. And the, and the words make you feel good or they make you feel better or whatever. They're there to fulfill something, that is, uh, some need in you, you know. But increasingly, I fall into bad habits where I then worry about, you know, meaning afterwards or whatever, which, because uh, you're writing songs, you kind of think, well, maybe I should worry about that. But actually, I think that's a, it's a deeply unhealthy thing to, you know, it's sort of... Uh, well, why is it unhealthy? Cause the well, because the people aren't going <clears> to <throat> get the meaning of it anyway, or, or, it's too, well, it, just, or it, it ruins it, it if you're too self-conscious? It reduces, yeah, it can reduce it. Uh, you... you you, you reduce the, the the initial energy, your initial response to things, because initial initial responses are always are always best uh, um, uh, in in this particular case. <laughs> now, <laughs> now your your set of words right there confuse the hell out of me. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, in, uh, I've illustrated my point completely. Very well. Uh, Alice right. Clark. Yeah. <laughs> so, if I take a a, a song. Um, like nude, there's a, a line about painting yourself white. I think, yeah, um, filling in the noise. It's a beautiful image. Should I just leave it as that image? Should I just leave it as to whatever my image is, or, or care about what you thought? Well, it th- that's a classic example of. of um, that was the first thing I wrote and tried for a very long time to change it to something uh, in quotes better. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, and uh, in quotes better was because, well, I mean. You look at it on paper, and it's like, well, what the hell's that? You know, and you can say the same thing about uh, Neil Young, for example. Uh, a lot of the time, his best were my favourite lyrics. Sorry, not his best. My favourite lyrics mm-hmm. of his are, are um, the ones that are obviously off the cuff. You know, they just come straight out. I think one of the things I love about um, was their song "Ambulances." Uh, this is it's just a series of, of sort of stanzas. That are seemingly unrelated. In fact, he even starts talking about how the fact there's no meaning behind the song halfway through it. But the set of images add a uh, set of uh, lyrics add up to an emotion that you can't put your finger on, but it leaves you sort of better off at the end of it. You know, and that's that to me is the idea. I mean, we only print lyrics, I think, on records because um, my pronunciation is not really good, and actually, I'd like people to understand. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it's kind of like, oh no, that's not right. You. You got that wrong, you know. When you go on um, unofficial sites and they're trying to transcribe uh, things that aren't typed out yet or whatever, so you kind of actually you want to make it vaguely clear, because otherwise, what are you doing? You wind up singing these songs, something that you scribbled on paper that felt good one night, and now you're singing them, you know, four years later to a mm. crowd of a whole lot of people. When you sing these songs, when you're doing these things live, do they resonate again? Can they can they fall flat for you? You know, how does that work? Well, the the most disconcerting piece of the whole process is like when you finish the record and uh, you have to listen to it uh, afterwards for whatever reason, and all the way through the creative process till the mastering and so on, you've never you've never heard the holes, you've mm-hmm. never heard the weaknesses, and then when it's done, 
That's all you can hear, and it's horrible. So the weaknesses is all you yeah, can hear. Yeah, because it's. I guess it's like filmmakers when they finish a film, they can't watch it. You know. What about uh, distance? What about time? Yeah, that's that's the point. The point is the only way to heal that is to move on to something else, which is you know sort of what we're trying to do in various ways at the moment before we go out, because that's the only way to 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 see it for what it is. Because by that point, it's 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 everybody else's. It's not yours, and mm. you can't understand what the hell you've been doing for the last three years anyway. <laughs> Um, you know, but you know, when you go back to older stuff, then it makes sense. So it's just one of those things. And 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 the point for us, when you go out live, it's it's um, you get back to on a good night, you get back to the point where the initial energy was for writing the tune in the first place. You know, and I think especially for someone like Johnny, it's really vital to him creatively to have that, to because it keeps keeps him reminded of the point of, of, of it, you know. Let's play uh, Nude for Folks. This is a... It's the waltz number <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on your record. We got, we're talking to this guy... Um, um, we're talking to a guy, Diplo. Um, he, um, he did, he, yeah. He was with MIA and stuff. And uh, he's currently... Poor chap. He's currently trying to do a remix of it. And uh, uh, I sent an email saying... The main thing is you've got to keep it in 6-8. I'm like, yeah, I'm down with that, man. <laughs> Okie dokie. So I can't wait to hear it. We're great. Well, let's anyway, hear a little this bit. This is of the original. Good. The Walsh from In Rainbows. <laughs> it's really a good song. You should be so proud of that tune. Yeah, I like that tune. I still like that tune. Did you remix them for the... I mean, I got that one when I bought it for the... Uh, whenever it was in November. or No, October. Mm. Um did, when it, when it's a CD now, is it mixed again? Was was this with the no, cuts mixed just, again? No, um, it's just the you know it's the full uh, okay. it's the full Monty. There, there, it wasn't that particular cut. There were other cuts that I thought sounded different to me. Yeah, the full, yeah, it's just all the, the strength bits. of the. It's just that weird thing where uh, is that you know the MP3 thing was. Um, I think uh, we wanted to make sure that people could get it, so we. It was a quite. It was wasn't the biggest um, compression. Of, it could have been a couple of bits held out. <laughs> um, no, no, <laughs> no, man. It just got you know. It just got reduced a bit. Um, yeah. Which because we didn't want it to take ages to download and yeah, stuff. Sure. No, yeah. Not least of which because it would blown our server apart. <laughs> well, it totally worked. I'm so so glad you did it. Take us out on a, on a cut for. Oh yeah. Okay. More? Now what else we got on? Well, we got mm-hmm. Autica. Oh yeah. Uh, God, it's LP5, isn't it? Come yeah, on. you want us to skip it's, through it? No, 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 yeah, uh, uh, yeah okay. please, is that all right? Uh, yeah, sure. Next. Oh, actually, that's... No, have a listen to this one. I can hear them turning off in droves. <laughs> <laughs> Gets going in a minute. Skip, just skip. No, it's this good one though. It's a good one actually. Okay, so uh, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, okay, skip to the next one. It's a bit of a long intro. That one. So we're on two now, are we? Let's... Yes. Didn't you hear him nod? Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, next. There you go. What's that one? Three. This is this is called Ray. R A E. Oh, okay. We can keep going if you want. Yeah, fold four, wrap five is next, isn't it? Is that right? No. Oh, no, this one's pants. Next one. Next. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. That sounds great. That's great, that one. That's a good way to end, yeah. Great. Okay, what, so... What's that called, that one? Uh, it's V-O-S-E-N. I don't know what, how you say it. Of course it, it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have you heard the new attacker? Do, do you know how to? Do you not? No, I haven't. Do you know oh, how to say mental. it? No, okay. there isn't a way to say it. They, they, I think they put their elbows on the keyboard. Okay. Thanks for doing this today. Thanks for the pleasure. It. Actually, I haven't done any talking for a while. It's nice. Tom York speaking to us from the BBC Studios in Oxford, England. For other musicians playing DJ on All Songs Considered, you can find a link for that at the All Songs Considered homepage. And if you like this, write to us at allsongs at npr.org. Don't forget, we also have a blog. You can check that out and read our thoughts about new music and favorite bands that perhaps you don't know 
and a chance for you to write about the bands you love. That's All Songs Considered blog. Also, a link for that at allsongs.npr.org. And if you don't get this as a podcast, you should know that our show every week is downloadable as a podcast. For NPR Music, it's All Songs Considered. <laughs>